from an injury standpoint, uh, Keith, Randolph, and, and Reggie are making progress. Uh, we'll see where they're at. They haven't been cleared yet, but uh, hopefully get there by game time. Malik Elsie, I think, will practice with us tomorrow. Uh, and then really Tariq Barnes and, and uh, uh, Geske both really got cleared last Thursday or Friday, literally right before uh, uh, our, our trip over there. So that's why we took them, but they really hadn't got reps for two weeks. So uh, they'll be fully engaged in the game plan, game plan this week. And then I know a couple of you guys probably have asked. Uh, uh, um, uh, Caden obviously uh, uh, came out of the game at the end, but he had, he had no issue. Just uh, <coughs> full go for practice for us uh, moving forward. So. Really, from the game, it came out pretty healthy, to be quite honest. Got got a couple guys uh, uh, back for this week, which is always good, um, uh, and, and uh, see where they're at. Obviously, this Wisconsin team has transitioned a lot. You know, we've had several rematch games. Uh, Purdue, Nebraska were both rematch games with new staffs, right? So this is another rematch game, but obviously a totally different uh, makeup kind of what we saw from a year ago. There is some carryover on the defense side of the ball, but offensively, uh, obviously new personnel, uh, running back, obviously. but. Um, uh, personnel used in different ways, so this is kind of a totally uh, new new opponent in that regard. So I'm excited to get back here in Memorial, and uh, this is our eighth week, right? So there's some things that we started doing last week in practice. I thought our guys really responded well. I did some things Saturday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday last week to kind of increase their mental reps and decrease their physical reps, and obviously played a four-quarter game and played really strong at the end. So uh, we'll mirror some of that coming forward this week and uh, um, go forward. So with that, uh, congratulations to Seth. and. Uh, Caden, two guys get Big Ten Player of the Week. I think that's a huge deal and uh, very well deserved. I thought uh, uh, I asked Brett after the game, are we going to nominate uh, uh, um, uh, Caleb uh, for the walk-off field goal or, or uh, Isaiah for the two punt returns and then uh, had the uh, uh, Penn State kid get two punt returns for touchdowns, so I understand why he got it. And uh, I was in the punter uh, for Iowa going over 400 yards as a special treat. So uh, <laughs> too bad for those two guys that couldn't get Special Teams Player of the Week, but very well deserved. Brett, I'm sure every week is the same for you guys, but what's the key as a coaching staff when you do win? What do you emphasize to sustain? Yeah, uh, really the state status quo, our, our, our schedule for uh, Sunday uh, really remains the same. When it was, I might tweak it you know, just because of the number of reps in a game, um, like the amount of uh, uh, time that we devote to the opponent versus the upcoming opponent, but we pretty much uh, every Sunday kind of put the game to bed, win or lose, and then uh, uh, have a brief dinner break. We did have a victory meal, which – I think our guys really enjoy it, and I know coaches enjoy it as well, and then uh, jumped into our preparation for Wisconsin. Sometimes we'll take them out on the field, depending on kind of where we are injury-wise uh, and everything, but uh, for the most part, that, that Sunday, the reason we do that is to really win or lose. You flush it and move on, and I want them to hear walking out of the building on Sunday night, nothing but our next opponent, which obviously was Wisconsin, so they turn the page, and then today is a day off, but we see a lot of our kids come through, watch film, uh, get really game plan thoughts, and, and obviously come over and get a lot of treatment. Some of our guys do a voluntary lift on Monday as well. Brett, what changed for your flip in that timeout to go from calling field goal before half to, to going for it? Uh, the confidence in my coaches, uh, Barry Lunny. Um, I, I asked him if he felt good about the call, and he immediately answered, said he felt, felt great with the call. Um, uh, all the offensive coaches felt that way. And then, you know, what we uh, there was a little bit of a three headed monster going into that, that little scenario, right? We got really close on the pass play, so we were trying to get a, a, a read from the officials. On, on whether or not uh, the ball was crossed. They've gotten really hairy uh, this year about um, coaches leaving the box. I, I was trying to get down there to ask the question, and the clock was running, and I had one timeout to use, obviously. So um, a little bit of that going on with the addition to if it was short, do we want to go for it, do we want to kick the field goal? Uh, and then obviously when they called timeout, that kind of cleared everything up for us and let us, let us go to that moment. Right, that's a position of short yardage yeah. that we've talked a lot about in recent weeks. I mean, is there any confidence carry over your offense or coaches? Down well, um, you know, you go back to last Sunday, um, uh, I had a meeting. I always, you know, meet with both sides of the ball. We meet as a staff, and then I'll sit down. And one of the things I directed staff last Sunday was we were going to put in our, instead of having Wednesday be our third down, third and short, and fourth and short install, I moved it to, to Monday, and then we wrapped it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and obviously the first third and one was on the very first first drive that converted and then obviously the next play was a touchdown and I, and I made a big deal of that Sunday night in my presentation to the team about how we win games and a lot went into that prep and a lot went into the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do the, you know, maybe more mental reps and a little fewer physical reps, is it always, I mean, are you always looking at that midpoint of the season or do you adjust for um, the team or schedule? Or? Yeah, I think as a head coach, it's one of the, one of the things that I, <laughs> I think it, like today, uh, um, uh, I had three sheets laying in front of me of kind of a tomorrow's practice schedule, and I'd kind of gone back and forth several times with what I wanted to do was trying to tweak it between uh, uh, 
a certain number of periods and a certain number of walkthrough periods. And, and Mark Torsoni, our chief of staff, he came in and I think he saw all three sheets and I kind of went with one. Um, but I modeled it a lot off of what we did last year in week eight uh, a little bit. There's a little bit of carryover from where he's done things in the past, but really it's about this year's team, right? And uh, last year and last week in particular, we had those uh, two freshman running backs. We knew they were going to be uh, the, probably the guys on Saturday, so we wanted to get a lot of good early down reps with them. So we kind of increased the number of early down reps and minimized the number of uh, um, uh, third down reps that they took. So uh, it's a little bit of give and take each week, to be quite honest. But yes, you do all year long kind of taper as you get going. Um, and then obviously coming out of the bye week, we'll we use a little bit different schedule because we'll get an extra day of preparation or a couple days of preparation for that as well. Coach, the the game the game plan and really the execution offensively is it was that more indicative of the identity that you want to have as an offense? Are you talking about this past week. This past week. Yeah. Yes. Well, anytime you have success, that's an easy answer, right? Um, but I, I do think uh, you know uh, Barry in particular like felt really good going into the game. Uh, talked about things the week after that, obviously out of the out of the Nebraska game and. I think early on we kind of, uh, you know, the way Reggie was moving around, and obviously we knew we weren't going to have Josh. I said, hey, let's just go with a game plan that we're going to have uh, Caden and Aiden as the availability, and and, and uh, Fidanzo as the running back tandem, and, and let's go from there. We devise a game plan. And anytime he gained for, uh, 12 yards on the first play, uh, you know, it was a pretty pretty uh, impactful play, and then had a nice mix on, on that first series of some run and pass, and then. I think the third and one to convert it into the touchdown the next play really had a, a huge part. And then we uh, scored on, on series one, six, seven, and eight uh, of 12 series, right? So uh, six was the one right at the end of the half, obviously, that involved, and it resulted. And that was directly um, from a guy of ours stripping the ball out. Um, Kanena recovered it, and then we had an end of half series, and then we came out and double dipped. Uh, and, and I, and I kind of knew locks, like we said, we, I knew they put a huge emphasis. They, he comes from this game. Same uh, uh, coaching tree as I about you know kind of the Belichick uh, saving double dipping that's a that's a big thing with those guys and I knew what I was trying to do and I also knew what they were trying to do. Coach, I, uh, I know Wisconsin is the focus, of course, mm -hmm. but you got five conference games left. A lot of things still available to you. Do you guys talk about that at all as you know, a team? Yeah, I think about uh, any time on Sundays. You know, as a head coach, I usually. Uh, I, I, I at the end zone in on what we're doing, but I do take a picture about where we're at, what we're doing, whether it's win or lose. We talk about it. Um, uh, I think that where we're at right now, you know, to be a three and four football team, I was more emphasis on what we got to do, take care of this week than anything else. Um, kind of like when we're in that little bit of a stretch of, of, of adversity too. Like the best thing you can do is focus on the now, uh, and that gets you to where you want to be. There was thirty times on Saturday. What's that? Thirty times on Saturday where the guy who touched the football on offense, the center, the quarterback, the skill guy was. Not more than 20 years old. Um, do you think about the the youth that you have right now? And I know you have a standard for it. That's a great PFF stat. You had to research that. You had to be that. Uh, but I know you have a standard for it. you want them in week eight. But is there excitement about where they could be? I think I think it was very apparent to me right um, uh, when we got into fall camp. I, I remember. I think I've said this in here. You know, we got a room of 120 guys, and 40 of those guys have never been with us before, right? And uh, really about half of our travel roster is, is all new, right? As many veteran players as we had coming back, you know, you think a guy like Miles Scott who'd been with me for two years, but this is his first year at free safety. And there's just little things like that that uh, in, in retrospect, you know, I, I needed to uh, be a lot cleaner about how we approach the game and how we teach it and what we do. Um, I think that's a, a balance that you always got to be aware of as a head coach. But we do have a lot of youth that's playing extremely well. I tell you what, to see uh, Dylan Rosiak play the way he has the last couple of weeks, uh, Kanana Olaga, um, you know, he made a recovery there at the end of half. That 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 end of half drive never happens if I, I can't tell you who stripped it. Um, Taz says he does it. Uh, 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 Johnny said he did it, and and Dylan Rosiak said he did it. So regardless, the ball came out, and then you know that big man was jumping on it, and you see Kanana just literally. If you zoom in on that, it's it's amazing that he gets that ball out of there, and he's just got a kind of a knack for that. Um, Dylan Rosiak on the on the second and nine on that last series, you know he's one on one with a quarterback out in the flat and he gets him down. Um, uh, there's a play, you know, when they threw to uh, the quarterback on kind of the reverse throwback there. You know, I remember somebody on the headset goes, "It's wide open," and I said, "Miles is there." And Miles took a sideline skinny, which we practiced that probably six to seven times during fall camp, and he just got him down. And three plays later, we're they're punting. You know, so there's so many tangible, fundamental things that our young players are doing well. Uh, sometimes you got to live through some things that you're going through it, but uh, I'm also excited. You know, Johnny and Keith, obviously Keith missed last week, but those two guys are probably playing as good a football as I've seen them play. Uh, to see Seth Coleman come along and, and, and you know, 
had the production. He actually just literally got a text from OC. Uh, I think somebody tweeted it that, that hadn't been done uh, since uh, OC had done it. So OC <laughs> sent that text to me with some uh, some wise jokes. Uh, so I just it, it's fun to see the growth of some of these guys continue to get better and better. Alec Bryan is playing really really well. Uh, um, Gabe had a really good week of practice. I, I thought he was going to kind of have one of those games. I think when he missed that sack early, it kind of frustrated him a little bit. He's so bound up. Uh, but Gabe is really, truly playing pretty good against a run, better than he's ever played. Not the production, but uh, that stuff will come. We have talked in the past about replacing voices from last mm-hmm. year's team, and I'm just wondering how Casey Washington in particular has stepped into that. You know, it, it, I would say that he's probably one of the most, in my opinion, uh, uh, shining examples of someone that's really literally came from uh, when we started here. Well, obviously he left and came back, but... Uh, you know, my first year, you know, he's battling out some PT time with, with Hightower a little bit, you know, and there was kind of that some going back and forth. And, um, you know, I really thought last spring his, his, his game really took a big jump. And I began to talk to him about, hey, you've been through this a lot. Why don't you continue to express your voice? Because he's very intelligent, very well spoken. Mom and dad have raised a great kid, like just really. Uh, and, and then it was interesting on Sunday, like I was most of the time for me, um, I always tell our coaches and I tell our players, I, I coach with my back to the bench, right? So that's a purposeful thing that I do, that I've done that my entire career. I don't turn around much. When I turn around, it's to speak and say something. But most of the time, I keep my back to the bench because I have a coach. Uh, I, my responsibility, I think, is to manage a game. Like, I, I, can't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine these coaches that don't wear headsets or don't stay engaged with what's going on because I literally, you know, click over and tell defensive things that are going on, offense, vice versa. So it's very seldom as a hey coach, you get to turn around. Obviously during breaks, there's a difference. But um, I said, hey, is there any any voices on Sunday? You know that anybody would like to talk about or be out? And literally, like three or four of my coaches, both sides of the ball, at the same time, said Casey Washington was unbelievable. And and you could just see the confidence ooze out of him. There's a connection between him and Luke. Um, you know that same play was literally the drive that uh, the, the, the it was it wasn't the same because the defense played a little bit different. But that same play that he caught at the end of the game, he caught at the end of the half. Uh, which gave us a big game as well. So, um, but just just a lot of a lot of confidence in that young man. Brent, Coach, it like your offensive line really set a tone there yeah. early and throughout the game. Like, what have you noticed, just personnel wise, about that group generally? You know, uh, practice does make a difference. To be quite honest, and and Zai, that was the first time he had literally completed a week of practice in, in all of fall camp. Uh, Zai probably played his best game that he's played since he's been here. Uh, so. For him to take a step forward, you know, Julian's always played pretty good. Um, you know, Hunter, you know, got better. I do think Geske will be back with us this week. Uh, 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 Josh made a m- noticeable improvement from the last game to this game. So, yeah, there's definitely some positives uh, that are coming forward. And I think, you know, Isaiah Adams, every every game he gets at right tackle is just making him improve. So uh, we, we worked Tanner Arkin. I'm sure you saw that in the mix a little bit. And he was a nice addition uh, in our 12 personnel and in 13 as well. So. Uh, yeah, we're getting some doom phases in there and doing a good job. With Coach, is that, is that, you know, Barry said, you know, he didn't have the percentage on off the top of his head. Yeah. If you get it, pretty good chance you're going to win. Yeah, if you double dip, and really, if you just think about the pure math of it, like if you think about different football games you've either watched or been a part of, and if the offense scores two times without the defense going on the field, it's usually a turnover, a sudden change, right? That's how it normally happens. People don't notice it much and because there's a halftime and a band in between and, you know, a, a trip to the soda stand, right? Like, like, but that's exactly what happens if you watch a game where an offense scores, and before their other the other offense takes the field, you get another score. It usually changes the momentum of a game, and that's kind of what it is. Coach Zach, Zach Toby left the game. Do you know what his status is? Oh yeah, Zach. Um, yeah, his was a chest. Um, all the X-rays are negative. He's just a little bit sore, but we, we do expect him to be back out there. Um, um, if not this week, he'll be back after after the uh, bye week. For you personally, heading into Wisconsin, is there still any emotion, or is it different now that you kind of got the reunions out of the way? For me, uh, with, it, with Wisconsin coming here, um, there's always, you know, it's, it's nine years of my life. Uh, uh, got married in Madison. Um, have a lot of uh, coaches that are on that staff that you know that uh, are, you know, not so much now, but um, they're, they're always going to be those things. But it, it literally vanished as soon as I left there. Like it's just, I, I've been through it before a couple other times, so. Um, just have a, you know, Luke and I have known each other for a long time. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, don't know a lot of his coaches, but uh, obviously uh, a guy that uh, has uh, built uh, a lot of tradition of what he did at Cincinnati. He's continued forward there. So, uh, yeah, just just a lot of respect for him, I think. Without Keith on Saturday. What's that? Without Keith on Saturday, what did you get out of your defense? Line? Yeah, I thought Johnny, you know, he kind of took into that role, um, played him kind of in that position. Uh, Bryce Barnes did a nice job. I thought Seth McConnell 
has just continued to really get a lot better every time. Denzel Daxon, another guy showed up. Alex Bray, um, uh, we had Pat Farrell there. He didn't get in there, but Pat Farrell had a nice week of work. But I, I think for, in particular, I think Bryce and, and uh, Seth really jumped forward. You know, Johnny just continues to be very impressive. And uh, I didn't realize this whole recruiting thing that I, I found out about that midway through the week that he had committed there and all that goes into it. So uh, I know it was, a, it was a fun week for all those guys. I, I think they really just enjoyed the game. Uh, uh, from A to Z, and obviously uh, it, that'll carry forward hopefully in our prep against Wisconsin. You guys obviously do some like pre scouting work. Uh, yeah. But what are the logistics when your quarterback gets knocked out yeah. the week before? How do you, what is the early part? Of you know, that? so I had watched a lot of North Carolina film specifically, right? Uh, obviously uh, uh, during the spring, during the summer, and, and uh, just trying to get a feel for uh, Longo. And, and uh, you know, obviously that was a different quarterback, right? So I kind of had looked at it through that perspective, and there, there are some things obviously that carry over from there, but. They've kind of had their own little Wisco type offense that they got going, I think, which is obviously a big, big responsibility on the OC, but I can see Luke's hands in certain things probably as a defensive guy. Um, uh, their quarterback uh, uh, that came in the game, you know, he got a lot of, he got, I mean, obviously he's a new quarterback, but he's had, you know, experience and he also, um, you know, got a lot, entire second half, you know, he's got a really a good feel for the game. Um, obviously with the running backs, when they're running the way they have, um, that, that takes a lot of pressure off them. And I think they're, they're very good uh, up front, and, and on the perimeter, they got some choices. So, uh, but I think anytime you're breaking a new quarterback, there's going to be that under that that, that get to know you period. That, that I think uh, uh, as coaches, we have to prepare really for everything because they haven't really showed what they can do. I think he moves really well, better than I thought, uh, or I, you know, uh, he moves better than I had hoped, I guess, uh, and and uh, creates threats in that ball game as well. How is their run game different in this offense, and, and what's the challenge of Braylon Allen? Yeah. You mean from what they've been? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just totally different. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's 11. It's a, a lot, you know, they have smaller personnel on the field. Um, but a lot of the same concepts inside, outside zone. Um, uh, do some pin pull and some stuff that, you know, just still carries over. Um, uh, I think offensively, you, you know, you've you've literally seen them kind of change and evolve during the course of the year. Uh, now, anytime you play Iowa, they're a little different, right? Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the, they present such a challenge defensively. Sometimes the game plan that you see against Iowa can't carry forward to a lot of what they do. Iowa plays a lot of quarters and plays a four down front, which, you know, for us, there's not a lot of carryover into the look. But obviously, the Purdue game is a good one for us to take a peek at, and there's some carryover there as well. And even Washington State and some games earlier in the year. I guess Aaron oh, talk, okay. talked about what he's able to do on third down when it's third and six, third and seven. I guess, what do you notice out of him as a play caller, just the way your defense can execute much longer? Than yeah, and so, you know, I've had a lot of defense coordinators. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know how many I've had now, but, you know, guys that become head coaches, uh, Charlie Partridge, Chris Ash, Dave Dorn, um, and, and obviously Ryan. Um, so, I've known Aaron in such a different capacity, right? Like, so he literally came to my office last night, I believe, like 10.30 or so, and I had like 30 plays I wanted to show him or whatever, we went through the game, and all of a sudden I look at the clock and it's 12.30, right? And, and like you guys sit up here, he can just go, right? Like, because it's, a, uh, when I have an edit I want to watch with him, I like watching it with just he and I, right? Because I like just, I, I've, I've been trying to grow him, you know, like one of the things that I really like to do is, with young new coordinators is kind of, you know, grow them, work them. And, and from a defensive point of view, it's a little bit different than offense, but um, uh, he just can, he can, he can really go, right? Like he can really talk. And like, so it takes us, you know, two hours to get through a 30 play edit, right? Because we end up talking about it goes in this direction. But what I've noticed out of him a play caller, his directness, um, his assertiveness. Um, we changed some things around last week. I took Andy Boo out of the box and put him on the field and I took Antonio uh, and Grant Morgan, who's a very talented young coach, and put him upstairs. And Andy had been on the field two years in a row. You know, uh, 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 Kevin had always been upstairs, right? And I really, I thought we, wa I wanted to see things in the back end. I thought Antonio, and he gave great insight. Antonio and Aaron, I mean, they played together, right? So they have a connection. So I really like the way our staff is evolving defensively and getting to know our players. We've made some adaptations. Uh, some of the things that we do well, some of the things we haven't done well, uh, taking advantage of, of uh, you know, some personnel, but also not allowing them to take advantage of our personnel like is a big part. I think one of the things defensively you really have to be aware of more than anything is all, all offensive coaches look for your weakest links, right? They want to look for things they feel they can attack. And when they're doing that, you have to take notice of that because that's what they see, right? I, it doesn't matter what we see. I always tell them, you always got to look at it from an opponent point of view. What are, what are they telling you your issues are? And that's what we're really honing in on. Thanks, guys. Thank you.